Hello everyone, it's Melanie. Um, I think I'm gonna entitle this video Catching Up because I've been kind of MIA and there's a lot of, I don't know. We'll just catch up. I don't want it to be too long, but I even made myself a list of things I wanted to, and made myself some piles around here because I wanted to just sort of play catch up um, and let you know what I've been up to in no particular order. So I made the list in this book and then I'd already made the list and I said, well, I could talk about this book. So, um, because it's a journal that I made out of a child craft um, novel and when I started, or, or child craft, um, they're kind of like encyclopedias, I guess. Um, so I made this book, it has a little tab in it, it says 2019. I made this book and it has a tab for calendars and it has a tab for ideas, which is mostly like video ideas and ideas of, well, mostly video ideas. Then it has a tab for Etsy. I'm trying to keep up with my Etsy stuff. There's really not much in here. Then I made a tab for um, to make and do, which is um, kind of empty. And then I think that's it. So. Anyway, I'm, I have this list of what I wanted to catch up with, and then I'm also going to make a list as I talk to you about video ideas, things that um, I would like to make a video of. So, here we go. In no particular order, what I've been up to, I'm going to cross off this book. Um, I wanted to show you this journal that I made um, a couple of videos back. This is the one where I sewed um, paper to all the pages, and then rebound it and I decided because I love um, recording poetry in my journals which let's see I think I, I've got one in here that I, I know I showed you here so here I wrote just wrote out a poem um, in my journal so I like I like to read poetry and um, I like me trying to memorize poems I think that's good for my mind <laughs> So anyway, I turned this into a poetry journal. So I'm just gonna hand copy poems that I like into this journal. Um, and I just started, you know, putting one on a page or um, whatever. So this is just, and this is something I had in my journal from 2014. And I was actually going to copy, um, I was gonna copy the poem or the quote. So it's quotes, I'm gonna say quotes and poetry. I was actually gonna copy the quote into the book um, and I looked it up in my journal and then I thought oh well it's pretty because I drew a little picture so I just made a copy of the journal page and put that in there and then so I've just done a, I've just done a few but as I come across a poem I really like I'm going to um, copy it in here and this is going to become my a collection of my favorite of my favorite poetry so that's what I've been doing with that I am sorry I have to put some my lips are dry. I had to put some chap stuff on. Okay, my I'm very behind on my journal. Um, the last day I actually journaled was June 28th, and then I haven't done anything since then. Um, as far as journaling, I haven't really kept you up with my journal lately. Um, I think this is the last spread that I showed you. Um, so since then, I mean, I could just kind of walk through the journal and it would show you kind of what I've been up to. Um, one of the things I really like to do in my journals, in addition to poetry and quotes, is I like to record when I learn a new word um, because I like vocabulary and stuff. So I, I heard this term um, and I actually, I found it because I was playing with um, some dictionary pages and I saw it in the dictionary and um, I really thought it was interesting. So it's um, su generis, which is Latin, and it means unique or peculiar. So I thought that was kind of cool. So I also do that. I copy things into my journals. This is a day that my daughter and I went to Dallas and saw the Christian Dior uh, exhibit in Dallas, and we ate at this Malibu poke, and I used my placemat um, as to journal on, and then I just kind of turned it into a little folder and put my receipts and stuff from that day in there and then this is postcards that I bought I bought a number of postcards but some of the outfits um, and then these are just some pictures that I took and the little flyer from the museum that's more of being at the museum 
just some journaling on that day. Oh, I did some embroidery for one of my quilts that I'm working on. You may have seen these pages. This was the day I, I made these journaling cards. More journaling and journaling cards and receipts. Um, I'll just flip through this really. Here's another Summer Sun. This is a Robert Louis Stevenson. I need to copy that one into my other poetry journal. And this is a quote about June from uh, uh, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Just some journaling. This I think you've seen. Um, this day, just more journaling tucked in here with some receipts. And um, I was going to practice my French this day on June 12th. I was into practicing French because I love the French language and I can read a little bit, understand a little less, um, speak not very much and write even probably less than that. But anyway, this is the, um, I used a Scantron and wrote down the hundred most common words in French. So this is a list. And to my surprise, I did actually know all of these words. I can't necessarily conjugate all these verbs, but I knew all of the words. So this is just some more, um, a note, journaling on one of those cards and a, um, antique mall that my mom and I went to. Oh, this was so fun. My husband, you know, I've mentioned before, is a stormtrooper in the 501st Legion. And my husband, bless his heart, he cannot dance. There's n The man has zero talent when it comes to dance. But he was actually on stage as a backup dancer at a Weird Al Yankovic concert because apparently Will Weird Al does a Star Wars song. And um, I'm not a huge Weird Al fan. I don't dislike Weird Al. I just don't particularly, you know, I mean, I hear his music, but I don't purchase it. We'll just say that. Um, but there's my husband with Weird Al, and there were um, a Darth Vader and I think eight, one, two, three, no, six, a Darth Vader and six stormtroopers on stage with Al performing and actually moving like choreographed moves to this song that he does um, about Star Wars. Absolutely the highlight of my month um, to imagine my husband doing this. It was just so cool. There he is. There's like rehearsing and um, on stage with Weird Al. There are pose, you know, so cool. I mean, it's such a cool thing for him to get to do. Um, this day in June, oh, my cousin and her husband got a, he, well, he got her husband her husband got a Tesla and he brought it over and um, we rode in it and I still maintain that it is the fastest vehicle I've ever ridden in on land. It's the fastest land vehicle I've ever been in. It's absolutely frighteningly, frighteningly, it's so fast it's scary. Um, this day was Father's Day. I just took a picture of the sky and this day um, I spent going through the linens that I bought at a flea market and I just journaled about that and put one of the linens that I scanned in there. About this time I was realizing, okay, I have five signatures in this book and I was not quite to the middle of the second signature and there's still plenty of room in this book. I mean, you can see it's not even it's not even bulked out to the spine thickness yet, but um, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna do what I used to do in my other journals, which is just write. Um, and that's why I really love and miss my comp book journals, because there are pages that I would just write page after page after page. And so that's what I did in here. And I just, you probably can't read that from here. I can read it if I look at it you know, um, at the right angle because it's a metallic jelly roll pen. It's actually one of these, um, jelly roll metallics. And then there's the fact that, you know, sometimes I don't need to be able to go back and read this. It's just the act of writing. Um, that kind of gets things off your chest, gets them out there. And so 
for me, just writing is, you know, I, I may not need to go back and read this. Sometimes I do use them as a sort of historical record if I want to remember when something happened, but for the most part, I try to keep a calendar for that sort of thing. So this is just kind of an exercise, you know, but I just wrote directly on the pages, and I love that. Um, there's a day I, I guess I drank, surely I didn't drink, but I guess I did. I probably drank three cups of tea that day. Um, here's another just journaling day. Um, this day I got really distracted. <laughs> and then this page, in, this is from a Golden Book Encyclopedia, and this image, which I just couldn't cover up. I look at this image and it just cracks me up because I think, what on earth? See, I made it where this was a book club meeting because the entry here is books. So this is a book club meeting is what I've decided. And this guy showed up for book club with no pants. And it just cracks me up because I mean, he's wearing long sleeves, a head wrap, a fur vest, and a cape. Sandals with socks. I mean, look, that's, he's like way ahead of his time. And no pants. And it just is hilarious. That picture is just hilarious to me because I think, why would they even paint this guy with, with no pants? I don't know, just cracked me up, so I left it. Um, this is a day, I'll show you this, but this is a day I did a little line drawing based with using some of the elevation stuff from my house. I made a line drawing of my house that I'm gonna put in a quilt, an embroidery, and I'm gonna put it in a quilt. Um, here's another poem. This one's Bed in Summer by Robert Louis Stevenson. Um, oh, this day. Which day was that? It was this day. So June 24th, we didn't have power because a storm blew through the night before and we were without power for about 24 hours. And I know I mentioned that. I talked about how we lost everything in the fridge and stuff. So that we've talked about. This is just some goodies that I stuck in there. This was a scan that I did of my journal that I showed you earlier from 2014 and I apparently pulled it out of the scanner too fast and it, but I hated to just throw it away so I just put the top of it in there. Um, here's some more just journaling right on the page. Um, this one had already had a pocket sewn onto it but I didn't use it so I just journaled right over the pocket and I did the same thing here. There's a pocket there and I just journaled right on top of it. This day, um, I bought a new file cabinet at Goodwill. Nice, see, nice file cabinet. But while I was there, I lifted up the file cabinet while I was standing right here. I lifted it up to see how heavy it was. And when I sat it back down, apparently I sat it on the edge of my flip-flop, which I usually don't even wear these kind of flip-flops without an ankle strap. I don't usually even wear them in, in public, but I sat it down and I busted my flip-flop. So. I had a blowout, a flip-flop blowout, and it is, it's completely impossible, I know now, to walk in a flip-flop once it gets in this condition. Um, and incidentally, I had, these were my, this was my very first pair of Javiana flip-flops from Brazil. My very first, they're probably made in China, but they're Brazilian. Um, so this happened, I did have Jimmy Buffett um, Margaritaville stuck in my head for the whole rest of the day because he talks about blowing out his flip-flop in that song. Um, this page, I'm lamenting the loss of my very first pair of Javianas. I have like three other pair, but this is my first pair. It was kind of sad. Then, so the 26th, I spent reorganizing my craft room stuff again um, and putting things into the cabinet, which actually... There we go, video idea. I can show you how I kind of organized things into um, the file cabinet. Okay, I'll do that. That will be a video. Then the next day, this was my birthday. This came on a, a birthday card that I got from my insurance agent, but I thought when I was looking at it, I, you know, before I was gonna put it in the recycling, actually my husband put it in the recycling and I took it out. Um, but I just cut the balloons out. I thought it made a cute corner pocket. This is what my daughter wrapped my little present in, and she bought me these, uh, a pair of earrings at um, World Market. So I just drew the earrings in, and she wrote me a very, very sweet card, so I kept that. Um, this was some zucchini noodles. When I went into the recycling and grabbed this out of the recycling, 
this was in the recycling and I thought, oh, I'm gonna take that out and write about it because these were so good with some uh, marinara sauce. Oh my goodness, they're delicious. And then I have a birthday card, Star Wars themed, of course, from my dogs who signed it themselves with my husband's, a little bit of my husband's help. Um, this is the envelope actually that that came in and I just cut it diagonally, cut the envelope diagonally and then I glued it on this side and left it open on this side so I could tuck the card in there. Um, and then these book pages are from a children's book that I got from my mom and they're so beautiful. I just can't stand to write over them so I just left them. I skipped those pages because I really liked them. Sweet card I got from my husband, just tucked in there. And then I did more journaling directly on the pages. This one I journaled kind of, well actually I put quotes in there, um, but journaled around the text. And this page I just couldn't stand to write on so I left it. Um, just some stuff. Oh, this is from the Flow magazine, which I'll tell you about, which I bought the night of my birthday when we went out to eat. Um, more just journaling on the page. This is a sign that I put on my sliding glass door um, because the door stopped working. It, it wouldn't open. It was getting stuck. It was really bad. It was making a horrible noise. And so we had to wait until July 2nd for somebody to come because it has a lifetime warranty. So we called the company that made the door and they came out, a guy came out and fixed it. And so I could take the sign off because my dogs weren't really reading the sign anyway, even though it was down low. Um, so anyway, the guy fixed the door and this was the cause of the problem. It's one of those, it's a suction cup that you can hang stuff on and there wasn't anything hanging on it. And apparently when someone opened the door far enough, it knocked it off and caught it in the track, fell down in there, and then this was caught in the bottom track of the door. So we got it out. Um, I went ahead and kept the sign because it was kind of an ordeal because the dogs did not seem to understand that I could not open and close the door. And anyway, I mean, of course I'm being sarcastic, but, and then this was my daughter explaining some accounting stuff to me. Then there was this day. My, I woke up on the 28th and my, my precious Piper, who we have two Yorkshire Terriers, Piper, who I think her picture is back here. We passed her picture. Um, she was not feeling very well at all. This is Piper. She's so sweet. Um, Piper is not feeling well at all. Really long story short, um, it kind of took over our whole day, and we ended up that evening at the um, animal emergency room where they deter where they poked her and injected her and all this kinds of stuff and she was running a really high fever and they figured out that they think she had a urinary tract infection and but they didn't luckily have to um, get a urine sample because they would do that with a needle and I'd never really thought about that that um, you know you can't have a dog give a urine sample really I mean and plus she's only like 10 inches tall so you can't get under there um, but in order to do a urine biopsy I didn't realize that that they actually have to inject they have to actually put a needle into her bladder and remove and, and they said her bladder was only about you know that big so it was too risky and they didn't do it but they think she's been on antibiotics she's on amoxicillin and she does not like it at all so that was the last day I journaled, and I kind of I journaled about that here. She's feeling better, um, but then that was the last day that I actually wrote in my journal. And I think now, because I've been journaling directly on the pages, I'm I'm almost to the center of the fourth signature, and then I'll just have um, so I've got a signature and a half left, and I have a lot of pages coming up here that are nice and flat that don't have anything on them. And I think I'm gonna do the same thing. I think I'm just gonna write directly over the pages um, like this because that's the kind, I love that kind of journaling and I miss doing it because I don't, because this book in the beginning definitely seemed more that it was you know, for ephemera and stuff. So that brings me to this. Um, the other day I scanned, I ironed and scanned um, some of the quilt pieces that I got, or this was actually a quilt top, and I washed it, I soaked it, washed it, soaked it, washed it, finally decided it was clean enough, 
you know, as clean as it was going to get. So I dismantled part of it because it was in really bad shape. And I um, pressed these and then scanned them and um, resized them kind of into a, a little digi sheet. So I'd have another patchwork sheet. Um, and I really like them. I did this after I did my July, um, my July kit. Um, but I may still put it out there. This is it printed on um, the matte presentation paper, and this this is the other half of it. There's that, and then this is it printed on just regular paper that I could, you know, tear, and it's thinner to use for collage. So that's there's something that I did, and this one I just stapled a butterfly onto it from the July. That's this is actually from the July Digi Kit, and. Um, stapled it on there and I was going to do my 4th of July journaling and then put pictures from the 4th of July and and then I also need to take a few pages and catch up of what's happened between the 5th of July and June 28th. So that's where I'm at on my journal. Then on my birthday we went out to eat and um, we went to Barnes and Noble and I looked at this book and I contemplated getting this or getting, um, I was looking at um, a couple of Stampington magazines that I really liked. I ultimately decided to get this flow book for paper lovers, which I don't know if this is the only one. I don't, I don't think this is the only one they've ever done. This one's 2018, but, um, I went ahead and got this. I don't totally regret it because now I won't wonder whether or not I should ever buy it again. And honestly, I probably won't. Um, do I think it's worth, say, $15? Yes. If it was $15, I would totally, you know, maybe even $20. Do I think it's worth $33, $23.99? No. I won't, I won't buy it again for that price. Um, it's got a lot of cute stuff in it. I mean, this, I punched, I did all this, punched this out. It's got this little 3D pop-up greenhouse, but then I was like making, you know, doing this part and I thought, where am I going to put that? I don't have room to sit that anywhere. Some cute pages. There's the greenhouse. These are just solid paper pages. It's got some little posters from some of the different artists that contributed to this book. It does have some cute stickers. Um, another little poster. So I just thought I'd flip through it real quick if you haven't seen it. A banner I think it says it says stop and see and most likely I won't I won't use it um, this is really cute it makes these little geodesic dome kind of so I need to cut those out those are cute there's quite a few of those in there um, this is writing paper I guess that's got you know a print pattern on the back there's some little tags and sentiments, more stickers. There's pages for um, like each day of the year and they're not, they're just dated. They could be for any year. Some little kind of postcard things. Um, these are stickers, little tags, more tags, stickers, stickers. This is, I mean, it's really cute, but what am I, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It's so, Here's lined paper with patterns on the back. Um, this is the give section, giving. This is actually, um, you're supposed to wrap a gift. So you could use these to wrap a gift, I guess, and then write the name right there. But I mean, they're not huge. Little tags, punch out tags. These are some pieces of um, wrapping paper. Um, and they're, they're, they're kind of cute, they're double-sided. Um, this is a whole section of um, fold your own gift bag. So I guess it's a, you know, a third of that page. Little, this is all for gift bags that you can make. More stickers. Those are cute. Letter stickers. Little tape shape stickers. Some other um, cardstock little um, prints of poster, you know, like postery kind of things. This is just a little blank. Kind of blank journal, um, some more patterned pages, and then it came with a little um, articulated 
Scotty dog, and then it came with this blank, um, which I think is the size of a traveler's notebook. Yeah, it's a little bit, it's a little bit wider. Anyway, I bought this on my birthday, and um, would I recommend you buy it for thirty? three dollars no if you could find it somewhere like half price books or I don't know and, and you don't think anything's been torn out of it if you could find it for half that then it may be worth it but um, it's fun I'll use some of the stuff but it's just I just want to show it to you okay let me cross that off the list the next thing is I did put out there on July 1st I put out there a July digi kit because I talked about doing a monthly kit and I kind of struggled with this one. I didn't know exactly what I wanted to put in it, but what I ended up with, I think is six pages, and I'll just show you real quick what they are. I used some letterhead and note card, notepad and receipts from um, Texas, places in Texas, and these are actually um, scans of pressed plants that I did of a while back I went out and collected as many different weeds as I could find in my garden and then I pressed them and um, put them into I mean yeah I don't know so anyway that's what these are these are weeds from my garden um, after they've been pressed and scanned had the background removed and then I superimposed them on top of these and in this kit I actually did include some JPEGs and you get these images and full these forms and stuff in full size um, as JPEG so you can resize them as you as you need to um, these are some pretty doilies and part of a handkerchief um, and you get these also in um, full size in, in a JPEG so you could resize them and print them um, this page I I made a, um, a library card to use for myself so I thought well, I'd share that so I put it in here with a white background and then with a little bit of an aged background and then this one I just thought was pretty with the butterfly on it and then these are some butterflies that I actually photoshopped out of larger prints, vintage prints. It's all public, this public domain stuff. And then this is just some little, those little postage stamps that I made, <clears throat> excuse me, that you can cut apart and just add two things. So this is two of the journaling cards that I made. And then I had some space up here at the top. So I just added a piece of um, vintage ribbon so you, so you don't waste any paper. Um, this is a print that I made based on some vintage embroidery that I have that I scanned. Um, so there's that. And then this is the last page, and it's just um, copies of those um, forms and receipts and things with more of my <laughs> with more of my pressed weeds on top of them. So that's the July kit, and it's out there in my Etsy shop. Um, I'll definitely do. Let me see. Let me let me make a note on that. I'll, I can do a video of using using some of these things. July kit. Okay. So that's the July digi kit. So then we're going to go really random. Just stuff I've been up to since my last video. This actually goes in this book. Um, a while back, I ordered. I was fortunate enough. I got up early one day, which wasn't that early actually for me. But I got up early and I got... Um, one of Gail Augustinelli's um, Traveler's Notebook journals, and it's absolutely gorgeous. I have to tell you, I have to say my my favorite part of it is that it smells really good. It kind of smells like cinnamon. I don't know if that's what it is, but it oops, it kind of smells like cinnamon. So anyway, I ordered this. Um, Honestly, really just so that I could have a piece of Gail's work. Um, it's really beautiful. And I got the one that I wanted, so I was absolutely thrilled. So this kind of got me thinking about my traveler's notebooks because I kept traveler's notebooks um, for years. So this is um, my Midori traveler's notebook. It's, a, it's the real deal. This is the um, Pan American edition. I have two, but this is the one I ended up using most. And this is... Um, the one that was, I think it was 2015, but it was the blue. It's the blue leather cover, and it was the Pan American Edition. And I have made so many inserts for my Traveler's Notebooks, but the paper, everything is so nice on the actual Traveler's Notebook brand 
inserts. So that's mostly what I've always bought. And the only reason I didn't buy them for 2019 is because I like to get, um, that's a blank calendar. I like to get the yearly calendar. This is a weekly. Okay, this is the yearly. So I like to get the weekly, which comes in two set two two books, half the year in each book, six months in each book, and then the calendar. And it was going to be almost a hundred dollars just for those three little inserts. And so I didn't buy them. I kind of regret it now because I have I haven't been keeping much of a calendar like this um, now that I haven't been doing my traveler's notebook. Um, but anyway, so I thought, well, I might make another insert now that I have this of Gales, if I wanted to use it inside my note, you know, and it, it will fit if I take these others out. If I wanted to use this inside here, um, I could, and I thought, oh, I'll make something else. And so this was just another insert that I made, kind of based on that concept of sewing, you know, sewing things onto paper like like I did here. Um, this one is same sort of thing, but I glued, um, I just glued blank paper over the pages so that this could be used as a writing journal. And the pages did, I'm not finished. The pages are a little thick, whatnot. I just used a scrapbook paper and made. So anyway, that's just a little traveler's notebook that I made. And then since I was making traveler's notebook things the other day, my daughter brought this big outback sack home with to-go food in it and I decided I wanted to make that into a little notebook into a traveler's notebook so I turned it into a traveler's notebook and a couple days before that she had gone through her closet and gotten rid of um, bagged up some clothes that she didn't want anymore and one of the things in there was this dress that she bought for my cousin's wedding and I love this dress on her, it's so pretty. Um, but she put this in the donate pile and I took it out because I thought, oh my goodness, I want that lace. Um, so the first thing, I, I scanned it. So I scanned the lace on this dress and printed that out. Let me move that to the side. And so there it is on the cover of this little notebook. And then while I was in the scanning mood that day, she also got rid of this jacket thing. It's a really long jacket, anyway. Um, it has a lot of lace on it. And so I scanned, I don't think they're the same. I scanned that lace and um, just printed this on regular office paper. And then since I was scanning, I also scanned, um, this is a doily, a placemat, crocheted. This is, it's a crocheted placemat kind of thing that I have. I don't know if it's a placemat because it's maybe it's a dresser scarf because it's only because it doesn't have ruffles on that one side so maybe that's the side you would put up against the wall so maybe it's a dresser scarf I was at first thinking it was a placemat but so I am um, I scanned that and I thought I'd kind of play with that and then I just scanned some more doilies this one is a green green crochet that I have that kind of came out cool with some texture and that's just a plain one that I put on here and I have I have more doilies than I could ever I could doily every surface in my house if I wanted to but I love old crochet doilies Isn't this one beautiful um so I that was the day I was scanning stuff and I used those scans to make uh, the cover of this that's the green um the green doily and then the inside of this is just made with um, pieces of the bag and I didn't use the whole bag I probably should have but so this is just craft paper and it's traveler's notebook size so I made that uh, let me cross it off and the next thing on the list is a Roxy inspired folio, folio. so uh, Rachel at Roxy Creations was making some folio type things um, out of larger pieces of paper so I did one um, for myself, this is the this is a um, the backing of this. The cover is a folio out of a um, Golden Book Encyclopedia. Um, I have a lot of pages. I think I've mentioned to you. I have a lot of pages that I can't or I haven't used in journals because some of the topics that they discussed in the '50s um, aren't necessarily PC right now. So I have all these pages that 
um, I've held back because I, I can't, I don't want to use them. Um, so that was a perfect way, perfect thing to use for this. And, and I just collaged the front and the, the back and, and then I sewed just like this is, just like Rachel did, I sewed um, some pockets in and then I put paper inside and then I did that same thing where I just sew the paper over um, to make blank space. So this could def this is could be a writing journal because for the most part it's all blank. So I did that one day. I'll I'll see if I I'll find Rachel's video. It was one of her most recent videos. Um, and okay, and I got ahead of myself because I already did the scans. So then because I had done the scan these scans and I really liked them. I thought, oh, I need to, I should scan some other laces. So this morning I got some stuff out and I thought, oh, I'm going to scan these laces because I have, I have a lot of lace, a lot of lace. And I mentioned doilies too. I have a lot of those. Um, so I was going to do a video of putting together some collage sheets. So I got this paper out. I was going to do a video of putting together, um, sheets like this that I would then take over to the scanner and scan, but I discovered that it was actually easier for me to just arrange the laces on the scanner bed and then scan them rather than try and arrange it here and, you know, tack it down somehow to get it over to the scanner. Um, and once I started doing that, then I started playing with using different colors of paper behind them once I got them on the scanner. And so I've probably used half the ink in my printer. I don't have one of those eco tank printers. I'd love to have one, but um, so I started. This is the same lace with different backgrounds, um, and this is actually printed on matte presentation paper. So that's the actual quality of it. And then all the rest of these I printed on just copy paper because I was just afraid I would use way too much ink. So then I start doing these to use as backgrounds uh, or, you know, in collage, things like that. So it's just different. That's with craft paper behind it. This is with a soft pink behind it. Then I did these because I wanted to see what they look like and how they printed. But I actually, actually have full sheets of them, but um, I just want to see how they printed up and how they look. So there's navy and a light blue and a green and a pink behind them. And then... This is a bag of laces that I got at an estate sale. Um, and it has, I mean, they're just, they're really old. I haven't, I haven't gone through like this is, this is, um, I think this is part of a collar maybe. And then there are some that are sewn that you can tell that they were removed from garments. There's another piece of collar. Like they have still have a snap on the back or something, and they're really old. Um, yeah, like this almost looks, I don't know what this is. This almost looks like the top of a, I don't know. But they're really pretty. Um, and a couple of the pieces that were in here, someone was working on making they have, this is like, you know, paper bag or whatever, and they've stitched all of these laces onto the front of this. Um, and I think they were going to make, because there's actually the, a piece in here. I didn't plan this part, so I'm kind of, well, there's actually a, cir a circular piece of lace in here somewhere that's cut out. Oh, isn't that pretty? Um, that's cut out that fits that fits right here in the center of this. So I think they were cutting apart, you know, old lace and piecing it onto this backing. And then they were going to stitch the whole thing together and make like a big, beautiful doily. So there's that one that's in there, which I didn't scan. I, didn't, I just have it. And then there's this one, which is the same thing. It's just stitched down to this paper. Um, so I did scan a piece of this and I don't want to take it off the paper yet. I, I can't do it yet. I, I want to leave them like it is for some reason. So I scanned those and I arranged them two different ways on, um, 
in Photoshop, arranged them different on the page, and this is with a craft paper background. Um, so I scanned those. That's what this is what this turned into. Kind of pretty. And this wasn't as successful. This is just some pieces of stuff, and eh, I didn't like it that much. And then I started scanning this one, which was also in this bag. So I know it's probably pretty old, but I it, it is machine lace, so I'm not sure how old it is. But I did this in 13, I think I did 13 colors of this one. But I'll show you these, um, some of my favorites. That one's got pink behind it. That one's got like a khaki color behind it. This one has a coral behind it. That one's got green, obviously, and then that's the coral again, but then I just did a sample sheet for myself so I could see the colors. This is a purple, a red, and a yellow. So I spent this morning doing that and using tons of ink, so now I need to make some collage cards and things using these. There's some of the colors and pages, papers that I use. So I did that. I think we already talked about that. Um, something else that Rachel did, because I have been keeping up with Rachel uh, at Roxy Creations, I've been keeping up with her um, 100 days of, or her 100 day challenge project. And the other day she did some printing on tracing paper. And it was based on a video that she saw from um, the technique that she, a video she saw from Nick the Booksmith. And I, I honestly, I, I think I was subscribed to Nick the Booksmith, but I don't think I've watched a lot of her videos. So that was kind of fun because then I went to the original video that she was referring to. And um, not only is that Nick the Booksmith, I mean, my goodness, she is so cute. She's just so pretty. And she shows her face in her videos, which I haven't had the nerve to do yet. Um, so what I did, I didn't, this is the tracing paper, some of the tracing paper that I had. I couldn't find my other, but, um, so I printed some stuff on tracing paper, and then what she did was, um, she's making like glassine out of it. And I used some uh, art fixative that I had that I would use on things like um, a pastel artwork or something that you use, then you spray a fixative on it to keep it from smearing all over the place. And I just used some fixative that I had. And it was supposed to make like a glassine kind of texture, and it's pretty cool. I think that the things I chose to print on the tracing paper were really too bright and you kind of lose some of it because um, you don't have as much of that, there's not as much of that, you don't get the transparency of it when you put something so bright on it. So that was something I tried. I'll link to Rachel's video on that and Nick's video because I haven't tried Nick's technique yet, but um, that was something I tried. It was kind of fun. So I thought I'd share that with you. That could be another video if I am. Um... And then I wanted to show you this. I have had an uppercase subscription since, I think, issue number 10. It's either 8 or 10 um, that I've been getting uppercase magazines. So mine came the other day, and if you get these, you know, they usually come in a plastic bag. Um, but this says this time they sent it in this mailer, and it's a recycled paper mailer, and I just love it. It just feels good. So I can't wait to um, make something out of this. Jour you know, journal cover, I don't know, something. But I can't wait to use it. So if you got one of these in the mail too, let me know what, you, uh, what you're deciding, if you're gonna keep it, what you've been using it for. Using it for. And I need to hurry because my husband needs to come through here. Um, this is something else I wanted to share with you because I'd been working on it and I won't show you the whole story, but I did some little golden book journals. And the last time I did little golden book journals was like 2014, 2015. Um, and they were bound with my cinch. And I sold them, sold some on Etsy and then um, some at craft fairs and things like that. But I did a set of these recently. And um, I just haven't gotten to, I haven't made the video. I haven't made a video because I wanted to do a video of the whole how I arrived at this because these to me are kind of cool because they have a soft, they have a soft spine. Um, so the spine is, 
is flexible, which I've done plenty of little golden books, you know, that have the card cardboard spine, but these are actually flexible spines, which I love because of the way you can kind of handle it. And it's, it's, you know, the, the covers, but it's floppy and I don't know. I really like it. So I want to do a video of these, but I had also been following, um, a few YouTubers that posted some in their and put some in their Etsy shop and they're, they're not selling very fast. And so I, I just wondered if, I don't know if, if there's still a demand, if this is even something that people still want, um, is, uh, little golden book journals. Um, and honestly, the thing that's keeping me from putting them in my shop 100% is writing the listings. I don't want to write the list. I don't want to write the listings. I'm not looking forward to that part. So anyway, I just wanted to share them. Just if anyone's interested, you know, let me know. I love this Bambi one. Um, I have a lot of little golden books and, um, I like using them. I like the size of them, but I was really excited to figure out a way to do this soft, soft spine. This one I'm going to keep because I did, I had this book when I was little, but this is another copy of it. I actually have still my copy. This one belonged to Mary Ellen Martin, um, but it's crumbling. The pages are just crumbling. So I don't feel right selling this, but, um, here's one I put together with the riddles in it. I guess I could copy some of these riddles into my, um, into my poetry and quote journal, but anyway, so these are, these are cute. I'm going to keep this one. Um, I really like it. So I've got that going on. And then I was going to talk about just for a little bit, um, well, I was going to let you know that I am, I don't consider myself an expert in anything. Um, there are things that I'm definitely good at, things that I'm not so good at, like cooking. But one thing that I am an expert, I'm a total expert. There, there are very few people that could say that they are any better at me than the field of procrastination. I am a master master procrastinator. Um, both just old fashioned procrastination, just the straight up, I don't want to do it kind of stuff. And the productive procrastination where I find things that I need to do to avoid doing what I am supposed to be doing. So I have a bunch of golden book encyclopedia journals that I you know, I have people that have asked for them and I've said I would make them and I keep procrastinating. And I have to be 100% honest, it's just because I haven't felt inspired to do them. I've made quite a few of them and I don't know, it just, it, it just feels, um, it feels like work uh, all of a sudden now. So I'm going to keep making them. And if I have told you that I would make one, you know, for you, I am going to make it. I just would, I would like to wait until I really feel inspired because when I feel inspired, then I'm proud of what I put out there. And if I'm doing a journal like that and I don't necessarily feel particularly inspired, um, then I'm not really proud of my work and I don't want to put things like that out there. So just, just know uh, they are coming. Um, more Golden Book Encyclopedias are coming. I have prepped a bunch of covers. Um, I just need to get inspired to um, to do them. And um, so they're coming. It's just, you know, the one thing that I am really an expert in is procrastination. And um, I am so good at it. <laughs> Anyway, so that's my catch up, guys. Um, that was way longer than I thought it was going to be. Um, but I am going to post this video. Let's see, what is today? Today is the 5th, Friday the 5th. And so I'm going to post this as a catch up video. Um, so I'll get this posted, guys. And thank you if you stayed with me this long. Thanks for staying with me. Um, if you saw anything that I mentioned in this video that you'd like to see another video about, let me know down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed hanging out with me for this 
50 minutes, you know, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not subscribed. And I will um, try to beat this procrastination, distraction, loss of inspiration thing and be back soon with some other with some other videos. So you guys take care. I hope you're all doing well and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.